Load management is becoming a necessity as part of a home energy storage system. But what differentiates one system from the next? Here to make the pitch is Generac product manager, Michael McLaren. Hey, Michael, thanks for taking the time today. Thanks a lot for having me on, Chris. From an installer point of view, how does a load management system installation differ from uh, a protected loads panel installation? Although the time to install might be similar, uh, with a power manager, with the uh, with any load management solution, it's a box on the wall, you mount it, you run wires down from the breaker panel and back out to each of the loads. It's a very straightforward wiring compared to say, figuring out where to put the protected loads panel, um, figuring out which circuits. But the really, really important piece is that moment where you know, you're an installer and you're sitting in front of the customer and you're going, okay, you get this many loads. Uh, we had an installer say, it's like asking the homeowner, which finger do you want to lose? <laughs> and it's just, it's painful. And at that moment, the power is on, the customer's, you know, life is great. They can't even figure it out. What happens then is you, you wire in the ones they pick and an outage occurs and the homeowner goes, oh shoot, I forgot one of my loads. What load management does is it makes that question go away. When you're deciding how to set it up, you just say, well, which loads do you want to shed in order to make everything go? And, and the concept is that every load in your home can have power and the customer gets to make that decision when they need to make the decision. So they can change their minds anytime. I don't know how many hours of installer or, or pre-sales that might result in, but I believe it gets rid of one of those huge pain points for these people. And staying on the, the homeowner uh, value for a second, is there added value beyond the, I guess, convenience and flexibility? Uh, is there another way to calculate ROI that you're getting from adding load management, you know, versus just going the traditional route? With load management, um, whether you're on grid or off grid, you do have the ability to control your circuits. So, you know, it's like a little bit like home automation where you can tap on the app and turn something on, turn something off or what have you. But that ROI is perhaps not nearly as valuable as, again, that moment of install. If I go to you and I say, well, okay, you want another battery cabinet, uh, maybe $12,000, somewhere in the order of that. Do you want another battery module in your power cell battery cabinet? If you don't have six yet, we can add another one. That's another $2,500, $3,000 somewhere in there. Or I can give you the $1,000 power manager. We'll shed loads. You'll still get that long battery life. And the value for it is it's like one-tenth of buying a new battery cabinet. I always like to imagine that, the, you know, you have that in-home consultation and the customer says, yeah, I want to back up these 27 circuits. And the installer goes, uh, okay, so that will cost you another $14,000 more than, you know, what you originally thought would be. Well, load management comes along and says, hey, for a tenth of that, you're now covered. You have to accept that some of your loads won't be going. But typically for a homeowner in an outage, that's not a big deal. Um, you even may in, end up in the situation where uh, your inverter has, you know, lots of overhead available. Maybe it's middle of the day and you've got lots of solar, but you're in an outage and that protected loads panel says you've got these six circuits. If you've got extra solar and you're in the middle of the day and you're in an outage, you go, hey, great time to do my laundry. You go to the app, turn on the dryer, which you've had shed since the beginning of the outage and life is good again. So there's a couple of huge pain points that are just obliterated with, with the way that load management works. With there being so many load managers, smart circuit uh, products out there, what are some differentiators among them? And I guess specifically with the power manager, you know, what do you think are the differentiators? I think that load management is the next step in these energy systems. You know, we've we've spent a lot of effort in the producers, the the generators, the the solar, the wind, and so on. But I think there's a whole movement to, well, if you can manage your loads, manage the load side, you also have a lot of flexibility and ability to use that energy efficiently. If I wanna talk about the specific differentiators, the one that I've gotta start with is that 
it's a generic deep integration. I mean, I look at some of the others and they talk about deep integration with, with something. Um, the inverter, the power cell inverter and the power manager, they talk together, they coordinate. And so things like if the inverter needs loads to be shed uh, to prevent shutdown, if the inverter needs loads to be shed to make the battery last longer, that coordination is very deep and it's all built into our one single ecosystem. Everything is built into the unit. I, I recognize there's some out there where you need to buy an external power supply, you need to buy external relays, or contactors um, to make the solution work. Um, everything is, is in this box. You hook it up on the wall, you wire stuff to it, and you're done. And last, I don't really want to compete on, on cost always, but it is the lowest cost per circuit offer that's out there right now what happens then when the when the internet goes down along with the grid you know since these are like often cloud connected uh you know app connected services uh, that's a common question that comes up generac prides itself in being an expert on resilience you know you look at 60 years 60 some years of being in the home backup the home standby market you don't become the major player in that without having attention to that there are three what I'll call backup plans to communicating with the power manager. The first one is probably the most obvious, and that's just the idea that once you've programmed it to pay attention to the signals, the inverter, you know, the power usage and, and the outage state, that's all built in. So whether it loses connection with the entire world or not, it will continue to execute those algorithms. If the internet does go out, We've got a little button on the configuration page in the app. You just tap on that and it actually transitions you over to the local connection to the device over your homeowner's router. Now you're seeing the kind of like the configuration tool, but it's also quite good at, uh, you know, the homeowner's concerns at that moment, which might be, I need to turn a couple more loads off so that I can last long. And last but not least is something that we offer to our installers in case they don't have the Wi-Fi credentials or if by some unfortunate chance, somebody didn't put the home router on the backup power, <laughs> you walk up to the unit, there's a little Wi-Fi button there, you hit that, and it will begin broadcasting its own access point or AP mode. You connect your mobile device to that, you can see the SSID there, and then again, you're back into that same local tool and you can turn loads on and off to your heart's content. Can the power manager be installed as a retrofit with a non-generac system? Well, that's two questions, Chris. The first question is, can it be installed in retrofit? And absolutely. I mean, there's there's quite a fleet of power cell systems out there, and I would love to have people connect to those. Um, it isn't designed to interface with third-party batteries or third-party um, equipment. But I want to say that I, I think you actually did a, a pitch not too long ago with uh, one of my colleagues on the uh, the firmware update to allow us to couple the power cell batteries to third party inverters. So if you are doing a retrofit, you're adding a power cell battery to one of those systems. You don't have to rip out your micro inverters, don't have to rip out anything. Um, you can connect the power cell. And in that context, the power manager will also do your load management for you. I'm intrigued by the idea that once the hardware is installed and the, the software can get smarter and new functionality can be added or updated down the line. Are there any such updates coming for the power manager or maybe have already been included that I'm unaware of? You know, we've done our first release for power manager this year. That was earlier this year and homeowners will get to take advantage of new features. One of those is uh, state of charge management. You know, if the battery state of charge gets low, and you're worried that it's not gonna make it through to the rest of the night, you can shed more loads at that moment. So it's it's something that's popular with the, with the competitors as well. I do wanna highlight another feature which isn't really directly connected to Power Manager, but it's another product feature that uh, as product manager, I've been um, shepherding to market. And we released that earlier this year as well. It's called Outage Guard. And what it does is it's actually a cloud feature. It lives in the Generac Clean Energy Systems cloud and monitors databases for weather and scheduled outages throughout North America. A couple of days prior to the potential outage, if the risk 
seems high, and that's based on our uh, machine learning models, uh, which have been tested against um, Generax uh, outage database, which they've kept for decades. We've got it set up so that we'll put your power cell system into a charge mode like clean backup. It'll charge up the batteries and it'll leave it charged for a little while. If an outage occurs, then your battery's full when that starts. If there's no outage, well, maybe you lost a couple of dollars a day on, on a TOU rate or something like that. So what I do is I encourage homeowners who are already on TOU time of use schedules and you know they cycle their battery every day, but you realize that in order to cycle the battery, every morning around eight in the morning, your battery is as low as you can get it so that it's ready to soak up that solar through the day and then use it into the dinner hour and, and through the night. But if you have an outage at eight in the morning, that means your battery is the least prepared possible for that outage and you're not gonna last long. So the beauty about outage guard is that a couple of days prior to that, you know, we go up and we say, hey, we're gonna put you in clean backup. We're gonna take you out of your TOU schedules for a little while. You know, and again, you might lose a couple of dollars. It's not a big amount, but it's worth it because now eight in the morning on that day, you have an outage, your battery is 100% full. I can't imagine not turning that on. Is there a reason I, I, I mean, you, you mentioned, yeah, just be a couple dollars a day, but that seems like a, why else have a, a battery really, if you're, it's not going to be ready to go in an outage, right? And, and, and it's just the trade-off. I mean, we have two kinds of customers. We have customers who are looking for that value add. They're trying to use the TOU and they cycle their batteries. And, you know, they might put a 30% or a 50% minimum threshold on the battery so that in the case that the outage happens at eight in the morning, they'll live through it. But now they don't even have to necessarily do that. They could reduce the, you know, the reserve um, state charge and just let outage guard take care of it. I do have another customer who buys for resiliency. What they do is they buy the system and they don't, they're not thinking about the value stacking, you know, when they're on grid and life is good. They're only thinking about that moment where there's gonna be an outage and they want their battery to be 100% full. So they never cycle the batteries. They don't take advantage of it. Excess solar in the system, the battery's already full, so it can't take any more. They're giving up that value and they spend a lot. These systems are not inexpensive. What we're doing with outage guard is we say to those people, well, why don't you put it in self, self consumption, use your energy, you know, be a little bit liberal with it. Let those batteries cycle, knowing that a couple of days before a storm, we're going to put it back in that mode that you bought the system for in the first place. Um, well, hey, uh, just uh, thanks for taking the time and walking us through all the nuances of load management and the power manager. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. I, I'm glad to have the chance.